Hi, this is John, and today we're going to be talking about how to build a JSON API enabled API with Rails 5. And I'm probably going to stumble a lot over saying JSON API API, but uh, we're going to build an API with JSON API. It'll be great. So we're going to compare and contrast uh, using active model serializers, which has been around for a long time and was at least for a while involved. Um, included by default in Rails 5, but doesn't appear to be anymore. Um, with uh, JSON API resources, which provides a much more robust framework for creating these um, uh, JSON API specific APIs. Um, active model serializers will serialize in a wide variety of formats and is uh, great for just doing general RESTful uh, APIs as well. So what we are going to do, let's go over there, find our terminal. All right, so what we've done so far is uh, checked out Rails on master, um, and then we've executed the uh, Rails size XE uh, Rails, created a new site specifying that we want edge Rails and we want an API only project. So using API only, we get a reduced set of middleware and like the generators don't create like ERB views for us. Um, all right, so let's go there. And then I didn't bundle beforehand because I'm an asshole. So we're gonna go ahead and bundle. Um, let's, all right, so now we've got a brand new Rails project with API only, so if we look at application, you'll see here we've got API only true and um, a description of what being API only gives us. So at this point, we're gonna go back to our terminal and just generate a few models. So we'll have a user who just has a name, um, generate a post, that belongs to a user, has a title and a body. Then we'll go ahead and generate a comment <coughs> which belongs to a post <coughs> and a user and just has a body. All right, so at this point, we are going to seed some, or well, write some seeds before we get much further. So let's go ahead to our gem file, delete a bunch of this shit. So we're going to use this faker gem just to make it easy to create fake seed data. All right, so let's go back to our seeds. And I'm going to paste in some seeds here. So we create two users with fake names and then two times uh, this George person who, who knows what his name will actually be. Um, We'll create two posts for him, and then on each post, uh, Bob will leave a comment. All right, so at this point, let's actually uh, create our database, migrate our database, and see our database. We're going to try this all at once and see how it goes. Terribly. All right. I have done this before already, so let's drop our database before we do anything. Let's drop our database correctly. Have a drink of beer. All right, so that looks like that went well. So at this point, <clears throat> we're gonna go in and create some routes, say we have resources, posts. At this point, uh, just going to care about adding an endpoint for posts and nothing else. So let's go and create ourselves a controller. So posts controller. So post controller that inherits from application controller. And at this point, we're just going to say we have an index action or post, post at all, and render some JSON with our posts. So at this point, we should be able to start our server. Super, and go check out our posts. 
the default serialization. Oh, um, we didn't actually see, did we? save the seed file. <laughs> that will do it. Alright, try this one more time. Alright, okay, so we didn't set up our association. So a user has many posts and a user has many comments and then a post also has many comments. Alright, again. Great. All right, now at this point, we can see the default serialization of our posts, um, which just includes every attribute. So we get ID, user ID, title, body, and the timestamps. All right, so at this point, we're gonna start introducing um, active model serializers so that we get a nice way to add uh, um, things like including um, like the side loading, like the user that the post belongs to, or if we want to load all the comments when we load the post, gives us those sort of abilities. So let's go to our gem file and say add active model serializers. And we're using the master branch because with Rails 5, I had some issues with the latest release, just uh, point 0.9 is the latest release and it didn't seem to like Rails 5. So it bundle <clears throat> and then with uh, active model serializers we only need to create one serializer it comes with a nice uh, generator so let's generate post serializer let's go generate our post serializer uh, by default it will say let's serialize the ID so let's say I want the title body and then I want all the comments as well all right so at this point, let's go start our server again, refresh, and so now we can see we're getting only the attributes that we specified, and we are also loading the comments as well. So that'll save us HTTP requests so that if we always want to show all the comments when we're getting all the posts, it's probably more useful on a show action, but um, for case of example, we're just going to eagle load all the comments here. <coughs> okay. So this isn't a JSON API. This is just our general default uh, Rails JSON serialization. So if we're using something like Ember, where the default serialization strategy is a JSON API, uh, let's do that. That's why we're here. OK, so at this point, we are going to add an initializer. which configures uh, active model serializers to use the JSON API spec. Uh, so let's uh, call this active model serialization. And so in here we say, hey, active model serializers, use JSON API as your adapter. OK, so if we start a server again, we should see a radically different formatting of our data. Great. So this is following the JSON API spec where we have the ID, type, and then we have attributes and relationships. So, and the relationships is the data that we're side loading, and attributes is the attributes of our actual post. Great, so now we're getting some uh, JSON API uh, friendly data serialized, but the problem is that Active Model Serializers doesn't actually provide us with a way of adapting input. Say if we try to create a, uh, a post using JSON API, it will not understand what's happening. So if you are only concerned with um, serializing your data and getting it out in JSON API, Active Model Serializers has got your back. But if we want to actually support having like a create action, then um, it's not going to understand how to interpret the JSON uh, API formatted uh, data. Uh, strong parameters using this sort of structure 
is going to be interesting. Probably possible. You could write your own, but this is at, at this point I'd recommend reaching for something like JSON API resources. So um, this provides more of a framework for actually creating an API with create and update actions uh, that follow the JSON API spec. So let us see what that looks like. So what we're going to do first is uh, go ahead and update our gem file uh, and delete this. So at this point, we're going to remove active model serializers. Delete that guy. Update our gem file. So instead of active model serializers, we want JSON API resources. So once again, dealing with Rails 5, we're using the branch, which as of this recording hasn't been released. Um, let's see, we need to kill our serializers directory. Okay, so go back to our terminal, server bundle. All right, so to use JSON API, we actually need to, or JSON API resources, the gem, we need to go to our resources. Nope. We need to go to our routes, sorry. Thinking about resources. All right, and we're gonna replace the resources here with JSON API resources. So at this point, you can see just how far reaching the implications of using something as, I guess, heavy handed as JSON API resources is, it's going to affect everything. So write your own or do it the JSON API resources way. Um, so we are also going to rewrite our controller to inherit from JSON API resource controller. So this gives us all the functionality for doing the basic CRUD for posts using JSON API. So that's either great or terrifying, depending on where you stand in the world of magic. Um, but I don't know. I think it's pretty cool and gives you a great point, a uh, great place to st start for using a JSON API <coughs> for your APIs. Oh, uh, right. So at this point, we deleted our serializers, uh, but we need resources, which is how JSON IP API resources expects your resources to be represented. Got all sorts of great uh, redundant terminology. Um, okay, so we need to create a top level resources folder. And then in here, we are going to put some resources. So first, let's start with our post resource. And as you may have noticed when we were doing the active model serialization one, um, comments were used the default serialization where it's just every attribute. Uh, with um, JSON API resources, if we don't create a resource for everything, it will complain. So it's demanding that we spec out the serialization for everything, which, you know, seems okay. So our post resource inherits from JSON API resource, uh, we say we want to serialize the attributes, ID, title, and body, and also eager load the comments and the user. So let's create our comment resource. Uh, I just say serializer, user ID, probably post ID as well, and a body. And then we need our user resource. So if we come up over here, let's, say, okay, let's create our user resource. So here we're saying the top. All right, so we want to serialize our user's ID and, our na and name, and then we want to serialize their posts and comments. Um, this would be significant if we actually had a user's endpoint, which we're not going to fuck with at this point. But let's come back here, transfer our server again. Hopefully everything went well. Server starts. Let's refresh this. All right. <coughs> So now we see some 
new things. So here, JSON API resources is more closely following the JSON API spec. So we get these new things like links. So um, this is going to blow up because we haven't set up a uh, comments endpoint. So probably a good thing to do. Uh, if we want to actually eager load comments, we need to tell it to do that. So here now we start seeing, hey, our data for our relationships. Uh, we have comments of ID one. Down here we get our included array where we get our comments. Obviously we see these are the comments. And up here we're only referencing those by the type and the ID. So this is a, uh, I think, a much better representation of the actual JSON API spec, um, which says that you should actually request uh, side loading or including when you want it. And if we want to actually create, right, some data, we can do that with a curl curl request. So. So look at this. So we're targeting localhost posts. Uh, we're specifying the correct content type for JSON API, and then uh, parallels what we're seeing from the responses with JSON API. So we're saying data. We're creating a post with these attributes, and this post was created by this user. So if we execute that, you see a response where it essentially responds with the show serialization of that post. So if we come back here, uh, before we're seeing posts with ID 1, ID 2, and that is the end of the post, we can refresh, and we see our new post was created. So if you are just like one-off serializing data that is created through some other means and you want to use JSON API, I think Active Model Serialize is a great bet. It's been around for a long time. Um, but if you need a full functioning uh, JSON API, API, <laughs> I would go with JSON API resources. Um, smart plan for the future. Right, I hope this was helpful and uh, have a great day.